Hello, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, just a quick review for you, and today this review is more for those fountain pen people out there. I know some of you follow my channel, I've done a few pen reviews, and if you are a fountain pen person, you will know that once you start using fountain pens, you quickly become a paper connoisseur because with fountain pens, not all paper is created equal. You'll soon discover that if you try to use a fountain pen on really cheap copy paper, depending on the width of your nib, the kind of ink you're using, if it's really saturated in color, you will find that if you try to write on that kind of paper, you'll get a lot of bleed through, you'll get a lot of feathering. Feathering, for those of you who don't know, is when the line that you draw ink creeps out from that line and feathers throughout the paper. Often the bleed through will occur with really light kind of copy paper like this. You'll draw on the paper on the other side, the ink will bleed through to the other side of the paper, making that side unusable. So you start kind of becoming a connoisseur of paper. You start gathering a huge range of different notebooks and different papers. I have all sorts of things here. This is a Moleskine, not great for fountain pens, by the way a smaller graph notebook by, by Rhodia. That's 80 GSM paper, GSM being grams per square meter. So if you were to take a square meter of any given paper, that GSM number is how many grams that square meter would weigh. We've got the ubiquitous Rhodia number 16 dot pad. That's 90 GSM paper, I believe, or that might still be 80. I think that's 90. I have here a Leuchtturm notebook this is a little better than the Moleskine in terms of writing with fountain pens. You can see there's some writing there I did with the fountain pen. Works okay on this. Another Moleskine, not great. Claire Fontaine. This is 90 GSM paper and extremely smooth. So this is also very nice for fountain pens. And that brings me to this. This is Tomoe River paper produced by the Tomoe Gawa Company in Japan. This is a very thin paper. This is 52 GSM. And this Rhodia dot pad number 16 is 80 GSM. This is kind of the standard that a lot of people who do fountain pen reviews and ink reviews, they usually use this 80 GSM weight paper. So if 52 GSM, you would think that it would be impossible to use fountain pens on this paper. You would think there's no way that it wouldn't bleed through, that it would just be a huge mess. Aha, but that is not the case. So we have a very thin, very wonderfully textured paper and by textured i don't mean that there's a raised texture on the paper but just the feel it's a very creamy smooth paper very very delightful and i'm going to show you how it holds up to fountain pen use so in spite of its thinness can it actually take ink from a fountain pen and not become a giant mess so let's take a look so this is the paper in question this is in cream and this is the size that I ordered from Paper for Fountain Pens. It's the six and one eighth by eight and five eight cream pad. You get three of these pads, 100 sheets for 1950, I believe, but there are all sorts of different options on different websites. At the end of the video, I'll probably go through some of the different retailers which carry this paper. But it's a very, very <sighs> attractive paper to touch. There's a little bit of texture. It's not rough by any means, but it's not as smooth as say, you know, this Rhodia paper, this dot 16 notepad paper, that's a very smooth paper. And especially like Claire Fontaine, Claire Fontaine. This is a very, very smooth coated paper. This doesn't have that texture to it, but it's very light, just very luxurious. It's very nice to just rub your fingers over. And also it takes ink very well from the pen. It just is nice to write on. But because it's so thin, people might think, oh, you can't use fountain pens on this. But let's just take a look i didn't want to go through the tedium of actually you know writing out a bunch of different samples and stuff so i did a little bit of writing previous to starting to record this video and i'm just going to show you the results of that we don't want to take too long on this it is a piece of paper after all oh, one thing i did want to mention is because the paper is so thin a lot of people like to write in blank books and often they want to use a writing mat or a writing guide underneath with this paper, you kind of have to use a writing mat. If you're going to be writing on top of your pad, if you're pressing in with a fountain pen, even though you don't press hard with a fountain pen, it is still possible to make indentations into the paper behind. So it's always a good idea to use a writing mat, but because the paper is so thin, you can also quite easily see the guides through there, which is quite handy. So we've zoomed in a little bit now and I've just used several different pens, several different inks, several different nib sizes. I didn't go too crazy with changing out 
um, inks and pens and nibs. I just, a lot of it, I just threw different Lamy nibs onto my same Safari just for ease. But here we have an extra fine steel Lamy Studio Noodler's Black. Noodler's Black is a very standard ink, pretty well behaved. A lot of people know how it behaves in different pens and on different papers. So I thought that would be a good uh, ink to show. Here we have a fine nib in steel, Lamy Safari. Diamine Crimson, so I was using this pen in crimson. Here we have a medium gold nib, that's my Lamy 2000, and that's with Diamine Oxblood, pretty saturated color. And then again, we go to a broad steel nib, again, a Lamy Safari, Diamine Crimson. So you're not gonna see any feathering in any of this. I've noticed this paper is extremely resistant to feathering. And then we have a medium gold nib, Pilot Custom 823, that is this baby right here. You've seen a review of this lovely pen. And that's with uh, Hiroshizuku uh, Tsuku, what is it, Tsukiyo. That's it, I even wrote it wrong originally. Then we have our 1.1 millimeter italic, and that's in the Lamy Safari. Again, with Diamine Crimson, I didn't wanna keep changing out inks over and over again. And then now, don't start yelling at me about my flex nib writing. I'm not good at it. I've hardly done any of it, but I just wanted to show you flex nibs put out a lot of ink and I was using actual calligraphy nib or calligraphy ink here too. So it's a much thicker, more viscous kind of ink and much more likely to bleed or show through. So this is me, flex dip nib, noodler's black. Oh no, I was using noodler's black, Never mind. I thought I used the calligraphy nib there or calligraphy, calligraphy ink. And then I just used a watercolor brush with some Noodler's Apache Sunset to really slop some ink onto there to see what it would do. So that's the front side of the paper. No feathering whatsoever. The ink is nice and saturated. The color reproduction is very true on this paper. Very attractive against the kind of slightly off-white cream color, I think as well. And if you do have an uh, ink that sheens, it sheens really well on this paper. I've noticed that, especially with like my uh, Tsukiyo, the Iroshizuku, really, really cool. You get this red sheen from it. But let's look at the back of this paper and see what we have. So here we go, maybe we'll zoom out a little bit. I don't see any bleed at all. The extra fine, the fine, the medium, the broad, the italic, none of that. No bleed through whatsoever. We get a tiny little bit right here. This is from the flex pen or the flex nib writing with Noodler's Black. And then of course we get a fair amount when we're using a brush just completely full of ink. So that is pretty impressive. Even with the flex writing, barely any bleed through, just this one tiny little dot right here. Very, very impressive. Now what about show through? When it's down on a, on a table like this, you're not, you're not seeing much. If I pick it up, you can see a bit, but to me, I don't find that to be a, a huge amount. I still consider this other side of the paper completely usable, other than the fact that we had all this bleed through here, but this is not normal. You would not be doing this normally. But I don't find that bad at all. And to check into that a little further, I actually just did some writing. I got a piece of paper here and just started doing some writing, just copying out of a book. So that's one side. If we turn around and look at the other side, to me, that looks completely usable. Can you see a little bit of show through there? Yeah, you can see a little bit of what's going on on the other side of the paper, but this side is still completely legible. I find this completely fine. I don't think this is at all too much show through to be able to use the other side of the paper. And so I would completely use this in journal form if you had a bound book and some of the retailers that I'll mention at the end of the video do have bound books and journals. I completely think it's totally viable to use this paper on both sides. The main point of me buying this paper was to use it for letter writing. And often when I'm writing a letter, let's say I have a pad um, like I do with the Tomoe River paper, if I'm writing on one side of this paper and you know I'm really in the, in the zone, getting the flow going, I will usually just want to rip off a page, set it aside, and start writing on the next one. I don't want to wait for the first page to dry if I'm using a fountain pen and I'm writing a letter. And that's true even if I were using heavier paper. With this, I don't really care if I can write on the other side because of that. I'm ripping off the first page, I'm putting it aside, writing on the next page. That's usually the way I am with letters. So in that case, the fact that this, this paper is so light at 52 GSM 
makes it very economical for sending letters as well because as we all know postage is paid by the weight of what you're sending so if you have several sheets of this it's roughly half of a lot of the fountain pen friendly papers that most people would use so i'm quite pleased with the performance of this paper i think it does very very well so there you have it the tomoe river paper by the tomoe gawa company in japan I think, you know, this review was geared towards using a fountain pen on this paper, and I think given those criteria, it did very, very well. Yes, there's a bit of show through, but as we showed on this where I wrote on both sides, it was still completely usable, in my opinion. The other side was completely usable. Some people might not agree with me. They might think if there's any show through whatsoever, then the paper is not good for fountain pens. I'm not quite that strict. I could use both sides. I can see the writing on both sides. I think it's fine. Now, where to get this paper? There are quite a few retailers online and more and more every day are starting to carry this paper because it's becoming more popular. But I just have a few here. Um, you can go to nanamipaper.com and they have various notebook configurations. They have their Seven Seas notebook, which is kind of their flagship Tomoe River paper notebook. I think it has 480 pages, sort of a buckram cover, and that's around $28, $29, which sounds expensive, but 480 pages, you're not paying much per page. And they have some sample packs and other things like that. If you go to the website, you can see there's paperforfountainpens.com. They have various size pads. That's where I got the, these pads that I've been using. This is the six and one eighth by six, or no, by eight and five eighths pad, 100 sheets. You get three packs of those for $19.50, and you can get that in cream or white. And then they also have some blank journals that are, I think, 5.25 by 8.25, hardcover, 320 pages, $29, all sorts of different options. You just have to check, and they change, you know, day to day, depending on what they have in stock. And then jetpens.com has various notebooks and loose sheets in A4, A5, B4, cream and white. If you just do a search for Tomoe River Paper online, you're gonna find quite a few different retailers and different options for where to get them. So there you go. I think Tomoe River Paper is an excellent paper for fountain pens. Yes, there is a little show through, but very, very little bleed through. The ink just looks really nice on the page. You get a lot of sheen from different inks. I really enjoy it and I really like it for letter writing and things like that. I just think it lends your letter a little air of sophistication, distinction, if you were to send someone a letter written on the Tomoe River paper. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things reviewing a piece of paper. Until next time, have a good day.